Hello, today we'll deal with the treatment of heart failure and we are discussing hydralazine and isosorbate D-nitrate. This is a combination, so we will use hydralazine plus this. So these are two medications given sim simultaneously. And when do we give that? We know that the treatment of heart failure is mainly diuretics, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers. And whenever these medications are functioning well, we don't need to give anything else. But whenever these are not functioning well, for example, that the ACE inhibitors are causing a lot of side effects, ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. If these are causing a lot of side effects, cough, angioedema, hyperkalemia, and especially renal insufficiency, because we know that this causes a bad kidney function, then, then we need to switch to these medications, hydralazine and isosorbate D-nitrate. Why? Because uh, this medication does not cause renal insufficiency compared to ACE inhibitors. But are these medications better than ACE inhibitors? And ACE inhibitors? Not. No, they are not. Please, remember ACE inhibitors are the best ones. They are better tolerated, they increase the, the survival uh, of the patient, uh, so it's uh, much, much better tolerated also, and so on. The list goes on. The ACE inhibitors are the best ones. It's no question about it. But if, we, if, if, if they, are, they are causing renal insufficiency in some patients, we need to switch it, okay? Regardless of them, them uh, being so good, we need to switch them, okay? And therefore, we give this hydralazine and together with this isosorbate D-nitrate, these are vasodilators, they are dilating the arteries, and that can cause a lower blood pressure, that can cause that the afterload is less because the pressure that the heart needs to pump against is lower, and so on. So these are also good. But please, never give this, or don't give this, when we have heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, because we can divide heart failure into two types. We have those with reduced ejection fraction, which is less than 40% of ejection fraction, and those with preserved ejection fraction, which is more than 50%. Please, it has been shown that these medications, hydralazine and isosorbate D-nitrate, are good against those with reduced ejection fraction, but not uh, for those patients who have preserved one. So please don't give that. Okay, and now we have a patient, he, he, he was uh, having a heart failure for one year, he, we tried out uh, these diuretics, ACE inhibitors and so on, we saw that ACE inhibitors caused uh, renal uh, insufficiency, therefore we, switch, we are switching now to hydralazine and isosorbate D-nitrate, we will start with the dose, with the lowest dose, we always start with the lowest dose, hydralazine is 25 milligram, four times daily, and isosorbate D-nitrate is 20 milligram, three times times daily. So you see it's the difference here. Not four times daily, but three times daily. So hydralazine four times daily, 25 milligram, and isosorbate denitrate 20 milligram, three times daily. Okay, then we increase the dose every five days. So we increase the dose, so let's say we have hydralazine not 25 milligram, we increase it to a target dose. Every five days we increase it a little bit, and then we reach in, for example, in one month, we will reach a target dose of uh, the three times that, 75 milligram for, uh, four times daily, okay? And for the isosorbate D-nitrate, we will increase this 20 milligram three times daily into, double that, into 40 milligram three times daily. So as you see, this is the difference. Hydralazine was 25 milligram four times daily, and we increased it to the target dose of 75 milligram four times daily. That's a total of 300 milligram per day. Here, in, uh, for isosorbate D-nitrate, we started with 20 milligram three times daily, and we increased it into 40 milligram three times daily. That's a total of 120 milligram daily. Okay, and we have to remember that since these are vasodilators, they are decreasing the blood pressure. So we will get something called hypotension for many patients. Not all, but many patients can get hypotension when we, for example, have a hydralazine level, which is more than 200 milligram per day. We said that we wanted to reach the target dose of 300 milligram per day, and some patients cannot tolerate that. They will, they will get hypotension at already at 200 milligram per day, and therefore we cannot uh, reach the target level for this. We need, to, we need to be satisfied with 200 milligram or less than 200 milligram per day. Okay, and as, as we remember, we never give hydralazine or isosorbate D-nitrate as the first medication for heart failure. 
That's only a backup when ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers are not functioning well because they're causing a bad kidney function, a renal insufficiency, or, or due to the side effects of them. Okay, that's it. And this uh, isosorbate D nitrate, this is a nitrate. We also have other types of nitrates. For example, we have sublingual spray. So we will, the patient can travel in his pocket with a spray and then whenever he gets uh, symptoms of heart failure, like uh, acute dyspnea, so acute uh, difficulty of breathing, or he gets a chest pain, then he can have, have his uh, spray, quickly make two sprays, shush, shush, and then we will get a relief of this chest, spray, uh, chest pain and the relief of the breathing. Okay, and he will be able to breathe better. And this, this is the amazing thing about vasodilators. They are quick acting when you give it sublingual, so under the tongue. Okay, and these are nitrates, nitrate spray. But you also have, for example, there are patients who at, in the night will get difficulty breathing, so they cannot sleep well because they get difficulty breathing due to his heart failure at night, or when they exercise. They do any kind of exercise or, or make uh, um, or walk fast or so on. Then we have something called a transdermal patch. This derma means skin. So trans means through. So through the skin, transdermal patch. So you will put a patch on, on, on for example, the shoulder. And then through this, through this patch, you will get nitrates continuously and therefore when you sleep then you will not get this difficulty breathing so easily or uh, when you exercise you will be able to exercise longer with nitrates that's it so these are the two other nitrates that we have but otherwise here we're discussing actually isosorbate d nitrate these are taken by tablet form and also hydralazine is taken by tablet I just wanted to mention that there exist other types of nitrates also. So we have tablet form, we have spray form, and we have a patch form. Okay, good. And I think that's, that's enough. So I want you to remember that these medications, hydralazine and isosorbine, so let's make a summary, quick summary. These medications are only given when ACE inhibitors are causing renal insufficiency or angiotensin receptor blockers are causing renal insufficiency, then we switch to this medication. We, all, we always start with the lowest dose, so hydralazine 25 milligram, four times daily, and isosorbid D-nitrate 20 milligram, three times daily, and then every five days we increase it, and then we reach the target dose of hydralazine of 75 milligram, four times daily, and we reach the target dose of isosorbid D-nitrate of 40 milligram, three times daily. That's a total dose of 300 milligram per day of hydralazine, and that's a total dose of 120 milligram of is isosorbid D-nitrate daily. Good, and uh, remember that these are vasodilators, so they can decrease the blood pressure, and therefore you have to watch out if the patient is complaining about dizziness due to the hypotension or falling down, then please reduce the dose. And it has been seen, seen that many patients who are getting more than 200 milligram per day of hydralazine can get this uh, hypotension. So watch out for that. Otherwise, I think these are the most uh, important thing to remember that the patient can have a spray with him. So whenever he feels uh, that he has a difficult breathing, then make two sprays and then he, he is fine. He can go to the doctor's office and, and uh, then control why he had this difficulty breathing because that's called acute exacerbation of uh, heart failure or we can call it acute decompensation of heart failure. And then the patient needs to go to the doctor's office and uh, check, every, check uh, their heart function. So I think this is enough. So I thank you very much for listening.